All right, y'all. We got a new Patrick CC video, bro. Terry Crews tried to warn us. They mocked him. Let's see. In 2017, I saw one Nick of the Cannon most universally loved Hollywood thumbnail. stars, like, oh, Terry Crews, attempted to warn us about the depraved nature of powerful executives in the industry. Not only did he share his extremely humiliating experience to a global audience, but he also tried to do the right thing and get justice legally, only for his case oh. to be thrown out due to what seemed to be the LAPD being paid off. As if that wasn't bad enough, self-proclaimed macho men in the industry made fun of Terry for sharing his story, Damn. giving more of a reason for victims to remain silent. Terry Crews is like the Hulk, and I, I just couldn't get how he said that, that he didn't, like he froze like he was afraid. Oh, a, a little, come on, fifth. Chubby white man grabbed your nuts and you ain't do sh That's funny. I, I think it's hard for me. <laughs> oh my God. Be to think that a dude with all those muscles can't tell an agent to not touch his ass. Is there a chance that Terry just might be gay? Why are all of these from Vlad TV, bro? Why are all of these from Vlad TV, hey, bro? The instigator. Because I had the same thought that you just had. Ironically, as much as these men tried to minimize Cruz, all it did was expose themselves for being a cog in the wheel of Hollywood's evil machine. But this was just one of the countless dark moments in Terry's career. Although the world saw him as a lovable, muscular teddy bear, deep down he was suffering from a lifetime of pain. Today we are going to deep dive into the tragic story of Terry Cruz. Shout out to the Terry gentle Cruz, giant who never had to build a facade to be loved. The reason Terry Crews decided to become a chiseled 250 pound beast was because he thought he would have to oh kill his Ew. father. A lot of my, my oh. desire to be strong was because I knew one day I may have to kill my father. Terry what? what? When did this happen? Terry Crews was the son of a violent alcoholic father oh, and an extremely religious mother. That well, makes sense. My early earliest memory is my father knocking my mother out. Uh, he was physically abusive, just straight up. He would, and it's wild because he didn't hit us because my mother would kill him. Right. But my mother let him hit her. Which is it, uh, not let. I wouldn't even say let, but she would just say she kind of took her abuse. Mm -hmm as par for the course. Divorce Damn. was not even considered an option because of his mother's religious So it was like, really don't touch my kids, but you can hit me type. Oh my God, bro. That's, that's, imagine seeing that growing up as a kid, bro. Is your mom just getting beat on. So Terry wow. had to witness this constant violence through his formative years. Additionally, his mother's religion did not allow Terry to go to the movies, watch television, listen to music, or really do anything that was secular. There's a religion? What? So he developed an incredible imagination and a knack for drawing. I started this art ability simply because I had a huge imagination and was wondering what the world was like. I mean, people would tell me, you know, they went to the movies and they would describe the films and I would try to draw them out Wow! That's because I couldn't crazy. see them. Whether it was playing the flute, dancing, painting, or acting, Terry knew he was destined to be an artist. But coming from Flint, Michigan, being an artist was not a realistic career. So he constantly felt the need to suppress his dreams. In the ninth grade, he was finally allowed to play sports. And being a larger kid, football. he gravitated to football. Yeah. At Flint Academy High School, Terry was the backbone of their defense. Despite this, he never got any offers to play college ball. He did, Damn. however, receive an art excellence scholarship to attend Western Michigan University. At WMU, he decided he would give football another chance. Due to his size and natural athletic ability, he earned a spot on the team as a walk-on player. As a defensive end, Terry was named to the All-American team by the National Strength and Conditioning oh, Association. Over Terry his college Cruz career, really Terry Crews recovered trades, four fumbles, key. which was one shy of a school record, and recorded 12 tackles in a 24 to 12 victory over Wisconsin. His That's play on wild. the field helped him earn second team all Mid-American Conference honors. Cruz helped Western Michigan win the Mid-American Conference Championship in 1988. And even though Terry still be I know it's not what it means, but just hearing all Mid-American <laughs> Jeez, bro, brain rot, dog. Okay. Believed he was destined to be an artist, he just had no realistic way of achieving that dream. Plus, he had a chance of making the National Football League. All the way back to college, when I was dating my wife, I told her we were sitting 
uh, uh, Wendy's probably ah, we were sitting Shay. in the Wendy's they had little places in the front where we sit there and I said look first of all I'm playing the NFL then we're gonna move to Hollywood we're gonna make sharp. <laughs> I made that promise you see because I always talk right and that, that's what got on everybody's nerves right. <laughs> okay they was like he talking again yeah. but I told her I said that's what we're gonna do we're gonna play in the NFL then we're going to move to Hollywood and make movies. She was like, okay, okay. And all this talk about football That's is reminding crazy. me that it's the best time of the year. The NFL season and the NBA season are underway. The Los Angeles Rams drafted Terry Crews in the 11th round. As a rookie with the LA Rams, he played in only six games that season on special teams and then sat out the rest I'm of- I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I didn't know Terry Crews was in the NFL ever. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is all new information to me. The 91 and 92 seasons. If I knew about I knew about his his corn addiction. I think everybody knows about Terry Crews' corn addiction because it was a big thing about him getting over it. No, the vast majority of NFL players NFL. don't earn those multi-million dollar paychecks, especially in the 90s. Plus, if you don't make the official roster or you get hurt you don't get paid. Cruz played oh, for shit. six different teams in seven years. He was constantly Damn. getting cut and was never able to secure that big contract. So he had to use his artistic abilities to make money. I would get cut from a team. Okay. And you know, I, I played I in really six teams in seven years. So that happened a lot. So I, I would go back into for the locker years. room and ask the players if they wanted their portraits painted. After and, being cut? Yes, because that's how I survived. I was always on the end of the roster. There was I was never a big superstar. I was an 11th round draft pick. So Damn. my whole thing is, I mean, humility gets you far. You know what I mean? I mean sometimes you got to make some money. You got to humble yourself. And I would go back in. And you know what was so cool? Because the big stars, they'd be like, man, let's just do, I'll get a little brother a painting, you know, and I'll give him some money. And it was really kind of cool. But the thing is, I was really good. It would take him about two months to complete a painting as it was done entirely by hand. But he would charge the players about $5,000 per piece, and that was enough to pay his rent, feed his wife, and two daughters. Terry even says My the reason K. he is bald is because he was so broke. Back in 1991, <laughs> I had the most beautiful flat top you could imagine. And then I went to the NFL, and I was like, oh, me and my high top is so beautiful, and then I got cut. And so I was like, oh, man, barbershops cost money, and I had no money. I mean, I literally was broke. I, I just went, I'm going all out, I'm shaving it off, and I was so disappointed. Were you really? Bro, wait, first of all, you gotta talk about, I didn't know it was lumpy. <laughs> I had no idea nah, there yeah, was that... lumps in my head. It was now 1997, <laughs> bro, crazy, Terry was bro. almost 30 years old and he knew he was never going to get the consistent NFL job. Over his seven year career, Terry played in a total of 26 NFL games Damn. and secured a total of five tackles. Feeling defeated Damn. with absolutely no direction to go in, it was actually his wife who brought up that promise that he made to her back in college. She said, Let's take the girls to Hollywood and make movies. But how does a guy with no money, no connections, and a family of four survive in Hollywood? Well, That's he started by asking his former Washington Redskins teammate, Ken Harvey, for money. And I was taking these loans from my friend, continued to take, I probably took about 20, 30 loans from this guy. Golly. And he was a pro football player. He's my good friend, Ken Harvey. He's still my good friend to this day. And that's what's so amazing. He stopped and said, hey, man, I asked for one more loan. He said, dude, that's it. I can't do it anymore. Terry lived off his friend's money for a year and a half trying to get a job working behind the scenes of a Hollywood production. He was unsuccessful. Desperate to pay the bills, Show he went is. to a temp agency to find work where they gave him a job sweeping factory floors for $8 an hour. Good sweeping Lord. floors humbled me. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a breaking that you have to go through. Because um, there was a long time I wouldn't do that. Right. And I was like, I'm like, hey, man, I, I, you know, I'm too proud for this. And, and what, what would everybody think if they see me sweeping a floor? Right. And my wife was like, they don't know you. After sweeping floors, Terry used his natural size and NFL pass to apply for security work. Good he shit. landed multiple jobs in L.A. working security outside of various Hollywood studios. In 1999, he was working outside the set during the filming of Next Friday, starring Holy. Ice Cube and Mike Epps. Terry's job on that set was to secure, a.k.a. just watch Ice Cube's car for 12 hours. Hours. And I was out there literally watching Cube's car. And you know, and there I was, I'm like, I'm in the business. <laughs> <laughs> but I was so far from anything happy. Through working Dude. I mean, sometimes, bro, like, bro was 30 years old before he got his big break. That's why I be telling people, like, you can't just give up 
Bro. Charity Terry met a friend who was a location manager. Give up. Location managers basically just oversee you, all of the various. You never know, bro. You never know when it's gonna happen for you. I mean, I'm in the same boat, bro. <laughs> locations of a film and I'm not giving up, bro. and they also hire security all these people looking to at my channel like, bro, gets like five views. Well, he's like, dude, I don't care. This really I'm gonna keep movie going, bro. The jungle right now with Denzel Washington. You gotta come check it out. I came on set as a visitor. I've always realized that you just have to go. Like if you just show up, a lot of times your opportunities are there. I was watching Denzel prepare and I was studying him and I was like, this is how an actor at the top of his game does his thing. Well, the director walks over to me, Antoine Fuqua, and he says, hey man, you wanna be in this movie? I said, yeah. I was like, sir, whatever you need me to do, it was wild. And he said, I'm gonna find ways to use you in the movie. And I was That's like, whatever you insane. need. And I didn't get one dime for training day. I just showed up, I volunteered, I said, whatever I can do. Wait, made, he made no money from being in this? Oh, he was uncredited. Okay. I just whatever you need and I didn't get one dime for training day. I just showed up. I volunteered. But that's how you get started. I said whatever I can do. You can tell I just want to help the movie. I want this to be the best thing ever. You can tell studios like oh, I've been in it. <laughs> okay. This is a Mandela effect. This is a Mandela effect. What? That's Terry Crews, bro. There's gotta be a Mandela effect. I don't remember Terry Crows, Crews being right here, bro. I mean, it's been years since I've watched this movie, but I don't remember that being Terry Crews, bro. <laughs> what? Okay. Terry's uncredited role in the film was so small and seemingly so insignificant, yet it was the reason why he got his big break and- That's what I'm saying, bro. You can be uncredited, but if you tell the directors like, or, um, you go out and audition like, hey man, I was in training day, I'm uncredited, but you can see me right here in Denzel's, one of Denzel's most popular scenes of all time. That's insane. Well, they probably didn't know that was one of Denzel's most popular scenes of all one uh, of all time at the time, but still. Hollywood. Training Day was a $100 million box office hit, yep, and it just so happened it. to be one of Ice Cube's favorite movies. W and when shit. Ice Cube was watching Training Day, he remembered Terry Crews as the security guard from his set two years ago. So he got in contact with Crews and asked him to audition for his next film, Friday After Next. But they remember- Yo. It's 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 really like a butterfly effect. It's really like a snowball effect. It's like, bro, you never know who's out what. This is why I always say, bro, you never know who's watching, bro. This is why you shouldn't get. This is like a this is low key motivational for a lot. For, well, for me personally, but but the, I'm hoping this is motivational for other people because it's like the power of not giving up is actually insane. Like Terry Crews literally just volunteered to be in a movie for like five seconds and now he he got his big break ice cube heard me knew so him because he was a security guard for friday after next and I, I remember sitting in the waiting room me and cat williams hoping praying one day we would be able to you know be in this movie cat williams and i decided we were going to go all in there was going to be no holding back if you look at the scenes with cat williams and i it's almost like a intense drama. Although Friday After Next was not a box office smash, the Friday series was a cult classic loved by millions yes, more than the financials is. indicate. Terry Crews was officially in. All of what he calls Black Hollywood knew his name, his face, and he was ready to take over. I knew I was in my destiny. When I say, and this is what I'm saying, I found my destiny. It was so wild because I didn't even want money anymore. I said, I want that feeling again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know I, you know what I mean? I, it's, it's too, because you could talk about athletes and money and all that stuff, but there's a point when I'm sure when you just catching and doing everything right, you wanna, you wanna chase that again. Despite Terry seeming like he was on top of the world, he was still suffering through dark times. One Corn Christmas addiction. that he calls the Christmas from hell, he decided to take his children and his wife back to Flint, Michigan to, to see, see his family. <clears throat> Fearful of his father, his father, also known as Big T, resorting back to his old ways, Terry told him to keep his composure in front of the grandchildren. But once the alcohol got flowing, Big T lashed out, and he hit Terry's mom in front of the children, knocking- Oh, and in front of Terry Crews. Oh, it, it's over, bro. Her tooth out of place. I said, so, what's going on? 
Oh, uh, nothing, nothing. I said, didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you not to act up? Didn't I tell you? CT. Bam! 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 Grown ass man now. I hit him. Bam! Bam! Grown ass man now. I hit him. I, we, then my brother came in. Bam! We beat his ass, CT. Now let me tell you something. This is the thing. Now, this they is what I want your father? Right <laughs> yeah. I didn't feel better. Mm. I didn't feel better. Mm. It didn't yeah. work. Terry learned right there and then that physical violence is never going to solve his problems. Nope. Because the thing is, with all this stuff, with all this shit, you have to rise above. Mm -hmm. I wasn't rising above. Yeah. I went down with him. Yeah. I went to his level. This yeah. is why gang members, when you shoot back, now you just like right. everybody else. Right with him. You right, right him. there with him. There's a right. moment that I had to choose to rise above, but I didn't. After this incident, Damn, Terry did not return true. home for over a decade. He went back to Hollywood and masked his pain through his work. Cruz had not yet proved himself as a lead in Hollywood. He was only getting minor roles, but he had a drive and dedication like no <laughs> other. He said yes to almost everything, which led to him filming four movies per year. But the one role that earned him global superstardom Light was six. his role as Latrell in White Chicks. Light six. White Chicks is about two fumbling FBI agents who disguise themselves as Oh, you ain't gotta describe White Chicks to me, but you might have to describe it for the audience in the back. Which princesses to infiltrate high society, with the obvious Time caveat that they totally are black men disguising ass. themselves as white women. That fact alone was enough to get people extremely interested in the film. Triple Terry T had met Damon K Wayans through his A. work. Damon is related to Keenan Ivory Wayans, who is Hollywood royalty, producing comedy classics like In Living Color, Scary Movie, mm -hmm. Don't Be a Menace to South Don't Central, among uh. others. The Wayans invited Cruz to audition for White Chicks, and Terry impressed Keenan, so much so that when he got the part as Latrell, the comedy legend often told Cruz to basically freestyle on set. Terry never felt more comfortable as an actor and comedian, and he knew this was his time to shine. In the film, Cruz plays the role of pro basketball player <laughs> Latrell Spencer, who is attracted to Tiffany, not knowing that she is actually Marcus disguised a as a woman. Santa must have come early this year, because you were first on my Christmas list. Woo, there it is right there. I want to know, are you naughty or nice? Sorry, I'm not interested. I'll take that as... No. <laughs> Throughout the entire Naughty. film, <laughs> Tiffany is trying to do whatever she can to make Latrell disinterested, whether that be pigging out in front of him or even letting one rip. But it doesn't work. Everything she does just makes Latrell Nobody's more ever interested. Nobody's ever talking to me like that. Nobody's ever cared. Bad skinny yum. I'm sorry. I'm... Girl, we gonna get along, along just fine. <laughs> Back at you. <laughs> But the most iconic movie, scene bro. from this film that defined Terry Crews' entire career was when Make he picked way. up Tiffany to go Make out to eat, way, turned on the radio, and sang every word to A Thousand Miles by Vanessa Carlton. The most shocking part about this scene was that it was actually filmed in just one take. It only took one take because Terry actually loved this song and knew every single word to it before ever stepping onto the movie set. Despite being hilarious in the entire film, Terry's career drastically changed from this scene alone. Own. Slowly but surely, did. everything just started to change for me. People would give me my mail, like, make him a way down, down. <laughs> it's so, it's and crazy. they were like, do the song. Do the song. White Chicks grossed over $100 million in the box Fire. office, but it is widely regarded as a cult classic. Still is. He became recognized globally and his Hollywood presence skyrocketed. From there, Cruz got a taste of the Adam Sandler stimulus Longest package Yard? when he secured a role in The Longest Yard. Oh my God, I love that movie. Which was a film about a washed up Why do I forget that he's in there? How did I forget that? professional football quarterback who goes to prison and is forced to assemble a team to play against the guards. Mm -hmm. Terry's character, Cheeseburger oh, Eddie, she okay, okay, I do remember this is dude. known for being able to get any item from the McDonald's menu into their prison. I knew you couldn't okay, resist I remember my him now. I got the shakes that'll make you quake. I got the fries, <laughs> fries that'll cross your eyes. eyes. <laughs> I got the burgers that'll... I just got the burgers. 
just got burgers. <laughs> he also did one of the cleanest robot dances you will ever see. Terry continued to steamroll through cult classics, securing the role as the president in Idiocracy. Idiocracy was written and directed by the legendary Mike Judge, who thought Terry was an absolute perfect fit for President Camacho, a former professional wrestler and also prawn star. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I know sh bad right now. With all that starving. Not it. I've never seen this movie before. We running out of french fries and burrito coverings. Yeah. <laughs> But I got a solution. That's what you said last time, dipshit. Ironically, President Camacho would have a decent chance at winning the actual presidential election today. But it was again a connection that Terry <laughs> Crews made on set that would get him another career defining role, which was portraying Chris Rock's father Julius. on the TV sitcom Everybody Hates Chris. I open that up. He's like, I want you to play my dad. Because he saw me. Wait a minute. Cat Williams was homeless when they met? and my wife Gabrielle and my Union two kids out? out there on, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, when we was filming Longest Yard, he was watching. And that's the thing another people, you got to remember, everybody is watching. Everybody is watching. Mm -hmm. I, I literally so just said that earlier. Then I played Never know who's watching. Chris's dad. And everybody hate Chris for four years straight. This man, when I look at my life, man, I just think, I just thank God for every, every opportunity. Everybody Hates Chris is an extremely highly rated sitcom, achieving a near perfect score from both fans and Shout critics. Out James Tyler and although it is a comedy, it is primarily about adolescence and family life in inner city poverty. The determined struggles of decent parents trying to provide a better life Actually and a values fire show, for their bro, family, I can't lie. which made Terry the perfect candidate for the role as that kind of explains his real life. Cruz's character, Julius, was loved for his insane level Levels of frugality. That's like five, five, five cents of milk on the table or some shit like that. I remember, bro. Uh, Eat that. That's thirty cent worth of oatmeal. <laughs> Unplug that clock, boy. You can't tell time when you sleep. It's two cents an hour. Throughout his career, Terry constantly <laughs> broke the trope that muscular African Americans had to be portrayed as tough gangsters. Muscles aren't funny was a common thought in the industry, and Terry knew he could break that barrier. He didn't need to pretend to be something he wasn't for the approval of Hollywood. No, I remember he didn't this. have to build some facade and maintain it so he could get consistent work. He always remained himself, and that's why fans loved him. Terry Crews is a giant muscular teddy bear that deserves to be loved and appreciated. After his hard work through the 2000s, Terry Crews was officially an A-list superstar, but his dark past that he hid from Corn his up. wife was at its tipping point. Not the money, the fame, nor the acceptance from the world could distract him from Corn. the secret he was hiding from his family. Corn. And on his darkest day to what he now calls D-Day is when he had to admit to his wife that he had cheated on her. Years go by. And but my wife was always suspicious, like you know. Oh, I thought he was gonna. What, be, what's up with you, Terry? Addiction. And I'm like, I'm good, I'm good. And I remember starting arguments, so she would stop talking. You forget, you start to forget which lie you told. You know, things start to conflate and what mix, you like mixing up, and and the pornography never stopped. It would it would be at a low, but I, I you know I go like a month and be like, oh wow, I'm good. And then uh, February 2010, she was like, what? is it i don't know about you terry cruz and i'm like what she has to complain about you know it's, it's a good life you know and the question i would ask her and, and i would literally ask myself was like why doesn't she believe me when the question i should have been asking is why am i lying you know mm -hmm. and i had blamed her for not believing me that's that's how deep it goes and i'm gonna tell you success is the warmest place to hide you get a lot of psychophants. You get a lot of people telling me, oh, telling you, you're right, you're right. I had tons of people like, man, you good. In comparison to everybody else, That's oh my true. God, you never hit your wife. You never, you, you, you bring the money home, you do all this stuff. But I was not real. I was a lie. Damn. I was living a lie. And when I told my wife, I heard this gasp on the other end, and I was like, oh boy, I think it's over. And she said, you know, I'm done. She said, I don't know who you are. I have no idea. Because see, to me, it happened 10 years ago. But to her, it happened today. 
most men in Hollywood, or in general, would have listened to their ego. They would have convinced themselves that their infidelity was no big deal, and it's menial compared to what other men do. Additionally, a mm -hmm. Hollywood star like Cheating Terry Crews okay. would probably have left their wife and just married some 21-year-old. But then, how would his kids view him? You see, mm -hmm. Terry Crews was trying to be the role model that his father never was. He also loved his wife and cherished her loyalty to him. She stuck by him when he was nothing. She believed in him, and he knew that was something he could not do. This picture, I'm looking at this picture and I'm trying to stay serious, but in the back of my head, I'm hearing Dr. Umar, Snow Bunny Hunter. <laughs> Just let go. They spent years repairing I'm their trying. relationship, but today they use their story as a way to help other couples revive oh their God. relationships. So now, this is what you have to do. And I was totally prepared to live the rest of my life by myself. Because knowing what I'd done, I was like, would I forgive me? See, that was the big thing. Like, would I forgive me? And you know what the answer was? No. No. Yeah. But she did. Many people praise Terry for opening up about his vulnerabilities. He says he constantly receives emails and messages from people that he has inspired to get help for their addictions, or dive deeper into their faith to find answers for their darkness. However, not everyone thought him being vulnerable was honorable. Some of them thought it was funny. More specifically, when he announced to the world that he was sexually assaulted, guys like 50 Cent, Nick Cannon, and others publicly mocked him. On October 10th, 2017, Terry yeah tweeted, this whole thing with Harvey Weinstein is giving me PTSD. Why? Because this kind of thing happened to me. My wife and I were at a Hollywood function last year and a high-level Hollywood executive came over to me and groped my privates. Holy Jumping back, I said, what are you doing? My wife saw everything and we looked at him like he was crazy. He just grinned like a jerk. The alleged perpetrator was Adam Vennett, who was Ew. the head of motion pictures for Morris Endeavor Entertainment, an American Which holding is... company for talent and media agencies with a net worth of around 6.9 billion dollars servicing a list client oh shit ben affleck jessica alba christian bale holy matt damon jennifer garner whoopi goldberg jake gyllenhaal k hudson Hugh like jackman. jake gyllenhaal christian bale hugh holy. jackman denzel washington and even elvis presley based on the casual nature Martin of Phoenix. terry's tweet it was kind of hard to take him seriously then when he went on national news to tell his story they realized this was no joke back in february 2016 i was assaulted by adam vennett who is the head of the motion picture department at Not William them waving Morris at the Endeavor, camera. one of the biggest agencies in the world. He's connected to, you know, probably everyone I know in the business. I did not know this man. So you did not know him before this? I have Damn. never had a conversation with him, ever. I literally, I'm looking at him and he's basically staring at me and he's sticking his tongue out and, you know, it's overt, just overtly kind of uh, tongue moves and I'm sitting there like it's a party it's packed the whole thing and I'm looking like is this a joke I mean I don't I don't understand it was actually so bizarre and he keeps coming over to me he comes over to me I stick my hand out and he literally takes his hand and puts it and squeezes my genital and I, I'm jumped back like hey hey and, and he's like and he's still licking his tongue out and all this stuff and I go dude what are you doing what are you doing and then he comes back again and he just won't stop. And I, 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 then I really got forceful, pushed him back. He bumps into all the other party goers, the whole thing, and he starts giggling and laughing. And let me tell you, Mike, I have never nah. felt more emasculated, more objectified. So you didn't think anybody would believe you if you came forward? And last year, no, no. Actually, I let it go. Actually, I put it in the back of my head, and I understood why women everywhere had to let it go. But let me tell you, when the Weinstein thing started happening, I got PTSD. I was going, oh my God, this exact thing happened to me. Shortly after Terry reported this, he Damn. got a call from Adam Vennett himself. I get a call, Here, it's him on the line. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm sorry, I was drunk, I wasn't myself that night. And I said, hey man, you gotta understand the depth of what you did in front of my wife. I said, man, you don't even know how close you got. For real. To, to really being hurt. And I said, you need some help. 
I th- you need to go get help. And he was like, yeah, okay. Was it sincere? Did you feel like it was sincere? No, no. It's like when people are sorry because they got caught. After uh-huh. telling his story to the world, Terry then decided to file a police report with the LAPD about the incident. Cruz first talked. Bro, you going after one of the top dogs. It's it's tough. Like, I salute him, bro. But it going after the top dogs is tough because month. they got... People have to and be held career. accountable. We're going to go all the way. Determined to get justice, Cruz filed a lawsuit against Adam Bennett. Russell Simmons, a record executive who has never done any business with Terry Cruz in his life, emailed Terry asking him if he would give the agent a pass. But Terry remained firm. Nobody gets a pass. I ignored it. When he, he emailed me at first. I- ah, there go, there go homie. There go ghost. I don't know. Uh, Omari, I think is his name. I ignored it. And then all of a sudden, he's like, I got zero tolerance for this thing. I'm like, wait a minute. You say you got zero tolerance, but you told me to get a dude pass when the dude did it to me. I said, that's because abusers protect abusers. This culture protects it. They, they protect each other like that. Terry even told his story in front of the Senate. My name Damn. is Terry Crews. I am an actor, author, former athlete, advocate, and a survivor of a assault. This past year, we have seen powerful men in Hollywood and elsewhere finally held accountable for sexual harassment and assault. Damn. We also saw the backlash survivors faced after coming forward. It's sad that people say, we need to care more about men who are essayed too. But when men speak up about it, they oftentimes get made fun of and ridiculed. The people who should be ridiculed are the gross assailants, not the victims. Since this was at the heart of the Me Too movement, where most people speaking out were called opportunists and liars, many raised the argument that nobody could possibly assault a 250 pound muscular beast the byline is by a female herself, bruh. It's like Terry Crews, essentially <laughs> proposing the idea that he was lying Sorry, or woman. doing this for attention. 50 Cent was one feathers. of the many who ridiculed him. On Instagram, he posted an image of a shirtless Terry Crews with the words, I got R-worded. My wife just watched. It also featured a second photo of Cruz in a suit with a rose in his mouth with the words, gym time. In the caption, he wrote, LOL, what the F is going on here, man? Terry, Did you see gym that? time. Oh, wait, never mind. They would have had to take me to jail. Get the strap. 50 doubled down on his comments in an interview with Larry King. I love 50, bro, but why, why'd you have to do that, bro? Hey, that, that was unnecessary. Terry Cruz is like the Hulk. This guy's like huge. And he, he, uh, when he gets into a scenario, he starts to explain the scenario because he was speaking to the Senate and it, and the lady asked him, well, you didn't do anything? You didn't like, like push him off? Or... And I, I just couldn't get how he said that he didn't, like he froze like he was afraid. And Terry was approached and asked to respond to 50's comments. He took the high road. Today, uh, 50 Cent took a shot at you on one of his posts, um, saying that he, no, saying with how big you are, how could the, you know? How could this TMZ is fucking disgusting, dog. I hate TMZ, bro. Can we talk about the Liam Payne thing real quick? Uh, I'm not trying to get too far into it, bro. But TMZ showing his fucking body. Are we serious, bro? TMZ will do anything for their clicks, bro. I swear to God, they will. To you, yeah. And people might say that shit about YouTubers. I've had some people say it about me, like. Oh, he's just saying this because he wants people to click on his videos with like some of my shorts and shit, which I'm never like that, bro. I just say things that pop up into my head. If I find it funny, I'll make it a short. It's really that simple, bro. I'm not doing it so that people will click. Obviously, people do click because they find it funny and watch the want to watch the full thing. And yeah, it does help. But I'm not ever making a video like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to say something controversial so I can make it into a short and get people to click on it. Nigga, what? No, it just happens. You know, he said if, if it had happened to him, he would have grabbed the strap. Well, I love 50 Cent. I listen to his music while I'm working out. Hey, that's the deal. Have... Amanda, the stairs. I love it. Anything about, about how big you are? Is that, is that something that, is that a fair comment by him? Well, first of all, I proved that size doesn't matter when it comes to sexual assault. But that didn't stop the conversation around Terry. In fact, it just poured more gas on the fire. Some people even started to ponder if Terry was gay and that maybe he liked it. Is there a chance that Terry just might be gay and hasn't come out the closet yet? Let me tell you something. When I saw that today, right, if with me for a split second, because I had the same thought that you just had. When when you're from the street, and now Terry Crews from Flint. (laughs) 
I hate Michigan. Flint. I don't know nobody else. This, this some of the coldest gangsters I know come out of Flint, Michigan. So, what the fuck he was trying to prove with the purse and the boots? I don't get it because it doesn't prove anything. And to the LBGTQ, to the Terry Cruises of the world, listen. We're not here to bash nobody. Some things are just uh, misconstrued. And don't forget, we are entitled to our opinions also. More of Terry's peers chimed no, in, shut like up, comedian D.L. Hewley. What do you think of the whole Terry Crews thing? I, I think it's hard for me to <laughs> think that a dude with all those muscles can't tell an Asian to not touch his ass. His ass or his ass? Whatever. Whatever he touched. I just do. I, I don't. I don't understand. I think that now everybody's so into this notion that you meet. It happened to me too. Hey, mother. God gave you muscles so you could say no. Presumably fed up for being mocked and ridiculed for over a year, Terry kind of snapped at DL, and the way he responded just caused even more controversy. Oh, of he got into a back and forth with DL Hewley on Twitter, where DL suggested that he should have slapped the executive for groping him. To which Terry replied, "So, sir." If you truly feel that is a correct way to deal with toxic behavior, should I slap the shit out of you? This tweet absolutely exploded with 227,000 likes, Ugh. but they were just in it for the drama. Of Many course, others obviously, bro. Of course, the tweet that blows up is the one where it's like, he, he finally cracks. Others felt like Terry crossed a line. So let me get this straight. He want to slap the black man for commenting on his situation, but he does nothing to the white man who created the situation by molesting him and basically dry him in front of his wife. Nick Cannon. Nigga, that couldn't have been a, a worse take ever, bro, what? And jumped in on the conversation. While he said he respects the way Terry handled the situation, he doesn't think that absolves him from being joked on. A little chubby white man grabbed your nuts and you ain't do sh that's funny. You a big ass mother. We gonna joke about that. Right. You come on wildin' out. We took. It's gonna be nut. Gra it's different with Nick Cannon because they, they. When you sign up to do wildin' out, you're signing up to get joked. You're you're, you're trying. You're, you're signing up to get made fun of, and you're signing up for people to bring up shit about your past to make fun of you for. So in that sense, I see what Nick is saying here because it's like, bro, you can't go on wilding out and expect not to get made fun of for shit bro i'm being honest like they they have no filter back there grabbing jokes for the whole episode See? like because it happened in the public we're talking about it's not we can joke about this there's no hate involved in this but that that's how you get over that humor heals like right, let's but... talk about it so he can't i don't agree with him jumping out there and 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 you know badgering all of these other people who are just talking about it like they, they're yeah jimmy kimmel jimmy Fett, all they made jokes about it too why are you not getting crazy with them nobody seemed to acknowledge that if terry cruz beat the snot out of this guy he would be labeled as the crazy black guy who overreacted and beat up the innocent white executive who uh -huh. was just playing a little joke unfortunately terry's lawsuit never got to see a trial and a settlement was reached between venet and cruz meaning terry did get some sort of payout venet denied the allegations in court documents claiming his actions towards cruz were not sexual and cause no harm. However, Cruz claims that the case was thrown out because Venet was in the LAPD's pockets. Yep. He tweeted, Adam Venet has been the event chairman of the LAPD Foundation, which raises millions for the so LAPD. For Anyone dog. wonder why my assault case against him was thrown out by the DA? Yeah. Hashtag me too. Terry yeah. risked his career to try to expose the dark reality of a Hollywood executive. Yeah. And for that, he was mocked and ridiculed by his peers. Some of them will never work with Terry because of this, but it doesn't really seem like it impacted his ability to get work. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Terminator Salvation, The Expendables 1, 2, and 3, Bridesmaids, Arrested Development, The Ridiculous Six, Sorry to Bother You, Deadpool 2, Hosting America's Got Talent, and even becoming the most iconic Old Spice spokesman in history, it's safe to say that standing up for what was right paid off in the end. All of yes, Terry's sir. decisions, even if deemed controversial, were done in the spirit of being the man his father never was. Terry is redefining masculinity, constantly asking himself, what is the right thing to do as a husband and as a father? And despite all the pain, 
torment and abuse his father put onto him, he forgave him and they made amends. And I got with my father. Shout out Terry, bro. And I forgave him. I learned, I said, you know what? My wife taught me forgiveness. I need to forgive you. And I, I'll never forget these words. I said, you know what? I've been waiting on you to say you're sorry. You know what? I am going to say right now that you, if I could choose my parents, I choose you because I came through you. I'm not from you. I came through you. You didn't come from your parents. You came through them. So you do not have to take the stuff that they have. That's you can true. choose what to take. You can choose the good or choose the bad. You don't have to settle for, well, this is what we did. This is how we are. That's a fact. So I told him that and he broke down. He broke down and I gave him the hug of a lifetime. And this hug lasted, I, I, I swear it felt like it lasted 10 minutes. And he cried, he cried and he broke down. He said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I did to you and Marcel. <laughs> he said, I'm sorry for what I did to you and your brother and your sister and your mother. And that's what I was waiting on. Just a sorry, bro. And it made me free. It made me free. Damn, bro. Why did I have to end the video on a sad note like that, bro? That should that should almost made me cry, bro. A little bit, bro. I got a little emotional right there, dog. Shout out Terry Crews, bro. You really did your thing, dude. I'm glad he came out over that. But they didn't talk about his 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 corn addiction at all. I guess that was like a small thing. All right.